Hey guys, how's it going? RGJ Runner here, and we're back on part 6. Part 6 already, you say? Jeez, it's been a while. Oh, it it's only been a few minutes. I decided I'd go ahead and play the music. Let's see what you have to offer. sharpen the saw, but I can sense it. It's definitely there. Alright, that was that wasn't good at all. That, that didn't sound nice. That didn't sound nice for a bit. Not really horrible. Anyway, I decided I'd go ahead and do a part six scene as I had time to kill. Speaking of kill. Damn it, I just want to send that hit fine. Never mind. Okay, so obviously some obviously some grizzly events occurred here on this here. I'd rather not think about it. Although it's obvious. Don't don't you got some That one seems okay, he seems great. Except that pigeon bill. Who's going to do punches punches? Punches. That thing is still wiggling. As I was saying before, the pigeon was crucified under punches pilot, or in this case, Alexander. Alexander. Are these more than I could do? Okay, not in the box either. Skulls in their lockers, or is it just me and, and Alexander? God, that his stairs followed me as a god. Well, whatever. Yeah. Attorney, what? No, no. And. Anthony Antimani, what, France, France, years, whatever, 19, f I'm already off to a bad start, to a bad start, 1658, January 9th, further disappointment, the Antiquarian's latest, the Antiquarian's latest findings yielded nothing, I'm still unable to grasp the inner workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect it will be in vain, since no research has been made in my particular interest. I must attempt to fill in that void myself. Clearly, humans amount. Yeah, this is amount more of the energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice as they will prove less of a hassle to acquire. Oh, Alexander, you sick son of a bitch. Thank you. 
sure we'll do something crazy. What part is this? It's a gold planner. Where do you go? Here too. There's nothing else here. Pretty nice. Kenneth Lucas Fires. After a short story, it is clear that the agitation found among humans can be found in the dog. Fear and pain induce stress, which seems to trigger an, in, an, in, an endogenous response, causing the animal to burst with energy. I believe that the catalyst is produced in the brain. It is difficult to determine exactly where and what it is, but I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic genesis. There is an there is an inherent problem in harvesting this energy since the creature is about to die from the exercise. I must refine this process of torture to enable any real work to be done. More experiments must be performed, but it seems that only human beings are able to produce the amount of to produce the amount necessary. It might be their ability to appreciate the severity of the process that augments their experience of terror. Okay. Okay, I won't lie, I, I read somewhere that this picture is supposed to have some sort of ghouly face on it. But I was obviously supposed to pick up that note first, then come here, come up here, pick up the second note, and empty this out. Ah, oh well. So, so many ghouly face.
My journal is gone. What would they want with my journal? governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. Word, worried for who now? Herbert? Uh, Herbert's fine. of this text ranged from quick notes to colourful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, recovered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? Pieces of your imagination are not dirty, don't exist.
shoes. Yeah, that's what's awesome. yeah, awesome. 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 Daniel. What? Still having nightmares, I see. Yes. I can't shake them. They come every night. We'll put a stop to them. You'll see. It's done! The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange.
July, 1839. Today, I went to the university looking for answers. I was able to sneak into Herbert's office and pick up an address book along with some relevant textbooks. Professor Taylor at the Faculty of History was very helpful and I managed to approach the subject of the orbs. The most interesting aspect was the prevalent trace they had left in our culture. The mythic orbs may in fact have inspired the Globus Cruciger, which so many royal regalia holds to this day. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. As I was leaving, I overheard a disturbing conversation. Sir William Smith, the geologist, was killed last night. Less than a fortnight had passed since I'd asked for his expertise. I know it's silly, but I can't help feeling responsible somehow. Jeez, Daniel, everyone that comes into contact with you is always dying. lack for the insight I crave. I've sent letters to many in Herbert's address book and received answers of varying importance. Today, I got one which differed greatly from the others. From a baron in Prussia. He said nothing about the quaint stories of priests in underground temples. He didn't even mention them. He simply wrote, I know. I can protect you. Come to Brennenburg Castle. Signed, Alexander. What am I to make of this? Protect me from what? Is someone after me? I looked up Brennenburg and traced it to the Prussian woods near the Baltic Sea. While being the least informative letter I've received, it causes me greatest distress and interest. As I write, my thoughts are drawn to my nightmares in which a most disturbing sound calls to me. A sound defying description. A voice from the void. The last few weeks have been awful, with so many sleepless nights dreading a repeat of those horrid dreams. Tomorrow, I shall visit my physician, Dr. Tate, 
in hope that he can provide me with sedatives to help me sleep.